you for the uh, introduction. I will share with you some of our recent results um, just to present what kind of uh, exciting insights we can obtain using time-resolved serocrystallography experiments. And in this case, we will focus on the ion pumping rhodopsins, which are naturally photoactive. So it has been already mentioned that um, with the construction of X-ray free electron lasers, we can now access a range of different time scales uh, in time resolved experiments. We can probe the ultra fast photochemistry in the sub picosecond time delays, and we can look also at the slower protein rearrangements. The way we do that, we use um, pump probe experiment. We serially deliver the crystalline sample into the X-ray path. But just before we probe the structural changes, we activate the crystals with a optical pump laser in case of the photoactive proteins. And um, by varying the time delay between the pump and the probe, we can obtain the consecutive snapshots of the structure of the protein in action. So these snapshots then can be assembled into a kind of molecular movie of the protein in action. So the proteins I'm, I'm talking about today is our, our retinal protein, retinal binding proteins, rhodopsins. They are integral membrane proteins consisting of seven transmembrane helices. And roughly in the middle of the protein, they bind the retinal chromophore. The retinal chromophore is bound covalently through the protonated sheath base, which is positively charged. This will be important later for our discussion. And it's bound to a lysine residue. So rhodopsins are involved in a number of um, biological functions, including vision, photosynthesis, ion transport, and um, a very fascinating topic. They are used as optogenetic tools. Basically, they can be overexpressed in neuronal cells. And by using the laser diode, we can uh, trigger um, even changing the behavior of the animals um, with these tools. So the very first um, rhodopsin, which has been studied by now in uh, great detail using time-resolved serocrystallography is bacteriodopsin. It is a proton pumping um, rhodopsin and it pumps protons from the cytoplasmic side to the extracellular side. So there are a number of uh, publications over the last few years, which probed the very fast changes in bacteriodopsin. This included the retinal isomerization, protein activation, and then the structural changes corresponding to the proton transfer. Also last year, there has been um, a very nice publication from Stanford's group uh, about the sodium pumping rhodopsin, which showed very nicely how the retinal isomerization triggers the opening of the tunnel of the midsection of the protein, enabling the sodium transport. However, today I will focus on, um, on the recent project in my group, uh, which is about the, the pump, chloride pumping um, rhodopsin from a marine bacterium. So this protein was identified in 2014 as a unidirectional chloride bromide, bromide pumping rhodopsin. And two years later, there have been dark state structure reported for this protein. So what do we see in this dark state structure? We see the retinal chromophore bound ha roughly halfway through the protein. And next to the positively charged protonated sheath base, there's a chloride bound in the resting state of the protein. There has been also very nice timers of spectroscopy paper um, of the protein in solution. Now, today, I will, so in this work, we have addressed a number of um, different scientific questions, but today I will focus only on one of them. It is how the energy of the photon is used to drive chloride transport. And of course, we will use the Thomas of serocrystallography to address this. Um, 
Thymosoft CR crystallography is very nicely complemented by Thymosoft spectroscopy. And in collaboration with a group of Joachim Hebele from University of Berlin, we have done the Thymosoft spectroscopy directly on our crystals. And this provides us um, very useful information which time delays after photoactivation can be interesting to be probed in our crystallographic experiments. Now we have performed very, very successful experiment at the Swissfell uh, free electron laser. So here in the um, left upper corner, you can see the crystallization setup. We use the Hamilton syringes and their lipidic cubic phase is inserted in this uh, form of kind of um, tube. It contains initially protein embedded in the lipidic cubic phase. And when we immerse this into the precipitant solution, after a while we obtain a very nice high density crystalline sample, which then we use in time of um, experiments. So today I will mention uh, only two time delays, uh, which we probed one at 10 picosecond and one at one microsecond. And we collected data for this uh, to roughly 1.5 angstrom resolution. So the very first results that we can uh, observe at the, during the experiment are so-called the Fourier difference maps, which are very easy to interpret. Um, so here we see the retinal of the um, chloride pumping rhodopsin, and we see the Fourier difference map. This is uh, negative density in yellow, means that the atoms are moving away from this position, and in blue is positive density indicating that the atoms are moving into this position. In the ideal case, we observe a pair of negative positive density, and there is, then there is quite easy a way to interpret what kind of structural changes are happening. For example, here the metal group at 10 picoseconds is moving from this position into that position, and then the triple sign is also moving from this to that. However, this is not how what, what we use to refine the structural intermediates. To refine the structural intermediates, we use so-called extrapolated um, structure, uh, extrapolated maps, and here this is shown here. Uh, we see again the dark state, resting state retinal of the protein, which doesn't quite fit into the extrapolated map from 10 picoseconds. And this we can use very nicely to model the protein intermediate. Okay, so now we go directly to the results. What do we observe in our experiment? On the left, we see the um, resting state in gray, and in pink, we see the 10 picosecond intermediate uh, focus around the retinal side. And what we see at 10 picosecond is that not only the retinal is in the 13 cis conformation, here we see the um, 13 cis bonds, but very importantly, the protonated shift base position changed after photoactivation. So in the resting state, the protonated shift base points towards the um, chloride binding site, forming a hydrogen bond. And here, this is what we see here in this uh, chemical diagram on the right side. We, we see the hydrogen bond forms to the um, chloride. However, after photoactivation, the, the, um, the dipole flipped away from the chloride. The hydrogen bond is broken. And in collaboration with Igor Shapiro group from University of Jerusalem, we were able to um, calculate um, that this charge separation between the protonated shift base and the chloride at 10 picosecond amounts to 28 kilocalorie per mole of stored energy. Um, and this is very interesting because in the experiment we used 520 nanometer um, laser light, which amounts to around 54 kilocalorie per mole. So what we actually observe is that over half of the energy from the photon of light that was absorbed a 10 picosecond is still stored structurally in this charge separation between the protonated shift base and the chloride ion. 
So we also obtained structure at 10 nanoseconds, which actually doesn't change much. And um, the changes we observe are at one microsecond. So what do we find at one microsecond is that in addition to the chloride binding site uh, found before at 10 picosecond, we also find the chloride binding site next to the retinol in a little bit um, surprising position. So what actually happened here is that while at 10 picosecond, we observed this charge separation between the protonated sheath base and the chloride anion, at one microsecond, the chloride anion followed the protonated sheath base and reestablished the favorable interaction with the protonated sheath base forming again the hydrogen bonds. Um, we can also think of it as um, that the energy from the charge separation available at 10 picoseconds has been now utilized to drive the very first step of the chloride transport with shift by four angstroms towards the cytoplasm. Um, Using our structural intermediates, and uh, again, in collaboration, we have performed the QMMM uh, simulation, and we obtained that the absorption maximum for our structural intermediate is 514 nanometers, which, um, which, which corresponds very closely to the maximum absorption um, obtained from the um, spectroscopic experiments. So this further validates the intermediate which we um, modeled. Um, we analyzed the interaction of the chloride in this position in great detail, and we see that not only the chloride interacts with the protonated shift base, so there is a negative and positive charge interaction, but also the chloride interacts with the pi electrons of the retinal backbone. So again, using the QMMM, we can look at the electron density difference in the absence and in the presence of chloride. And what we observe is that the pi electrons are polarized in the very characteristic way for the anion pi interaction. So I mentioned two time delays uh, for this project today. However, we collected a few more, both at the free electron laser and at the synchrotron and just as, as an overview, I will show now a movie using both the structures which I, which I presented and also the structures which we obtained for the later time delays for the protein. And um, I think it quite nicely shows how the chloride travels through the protein and also the potential of time resolved serial experiments. So we see the seven transmembrane helices of the rhodopsin. We see roughly in the middle, we see the retinal chromophore. We see the chloride binding site next to the protonated shift base. And now upon photoisomerization, there is a charge separation. And at one microsecond, the chloride follows the protonated shift base. And then over the retinal bottleneck. Then there are two chloride binding sites formed by conserved residues. One and the second one. And then eventually the chloride diffuses towards the cytoplasm driven by the positive charge on the surface, cytoplasmic surface of the protein. So here we see the positive charge. Now uptake happens through the positive patch first driven by one arginine, and then the second arginine until it arrives at the bottleneck here. Then there is an opening of this valve and the chloride is allowed to the um, retinal binding site. And eventually at, in the late, uh, at around 50 milliseconds, the resting state can be recharged. So in the end, I would like to acknowledge um, all the people that contributed to, to this work, especially uh, members of my group, Sandra and Guillaume. Sandra is a PhD student leading this project. I would like to acknowledge 
groups of Alan, Jonas, and Gossert who are hosting us at the ETH Zurich, and our collaborators from the Pocher Institute who are always helping us with the serial crystallography experiments. Our collaborators from uh, Berlin who are performing the um, spectroscopy in crystals, the group of Joachim Feberle, and our collaborators from Jerusalem who are performing the QMMM simulations, the group of Igor Shapiro. And thank you for your attention.